October 14th, 12.14pm. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 4. My sis? I could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. So then, she's still alive. Inside your heart. Nikki boy. Oh, Ms. Delight. Is it true that that detective is the real killer? To be honest, we don't have any de definite proof. But he's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at Lordy Taylor that night? Not to mention, we don't exactly know his motive. I mean, why would Detective Atme want to kill Kane Bullard? Oops, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. I need to find some solid proof. And it's gotta happen sooner rather than later. October 14th, 12.21pm. District Court. Courtroom number 6. Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Luke Atme, please take the stand. Well, well. How do you do, Sir Lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Mask de Masque. I'm sorry, I'm afraid even the great Luke Atme has no idea what you mean. Of course, I have been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tried as Mask de Masque. Indeed. It's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. So you continue to insist that you are, in fact, Mask de Masque? Of course. Very well then, Luke Atme. Let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1am, Cain Bullard was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Um, thanks. Alright, Mr. Atme, the night of the murder. Speak. Where all he is. As you wish, Sir Prosecutor. The Alibi I was stealing the urn as Mask de Masque, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. The time at which the camera captured Mask de Masque was the same time as the murder. Hmm. It seems the main point of discussion will be this photo of the crime scene. Everything else up to now is all part of his plan. There has to be a secret to this picture as well. Even the great Mask de Masque cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me. I have a verdict to receive. Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. I think he's trying to say that you're full of it, Nick. The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. Okay, so... Basically, we need to prove that this picture does not confirm his location, if we can. I don't quite remember how, so we're gonna start pressing. <laughs> So this photograph is the proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. That is why I am called Mask de Masque. But conveniently, that also means that there is no way to tell who this really is. W what do you mean? Objection. Huh. Are you saying that this is not, in fact, Luke Atme? That it could be an accomplice dressed up as Mask de Masque to create an alibi? Oh ho, what an interesting idea. Are you saying that I, Lone Wolf Luke, had an accomplice? He didn't have an accomplice. If Luke at me was at KB Security during the murder, 
then the master masque in this picture has to be a fake. Then there really was an accomplice. But right now, I have no idea who it was. Hmm, I don't have any idea right now either. Based on subjections are just what this guy wants. There's got to be another way, and I'm going to find it. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point? Oh, there she is. I love you, Adrian. That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor 10 days before the heist. That would mean you sent out the card after you began your security watch, right? Indeed, there was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my latest target. I see. You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey Nick, isn't there something odd about this? Hmm? Detective Atme was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor while he was the only one watching it, he have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true. It is kind of odd. So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here, is that correct? Indeed it is. That is it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. Hmm, when you think about it, it's really odd. You say that almost as if you had this picture taken on purpose. Objection. He was simply caught by the very camera that he had set up. We all have days like that. Indeed, it turned out that there was no such thing as the perfect crime after all. Life is truly an ironic thing, a sad, blue melody. Looks like I'd better gather more information for now. If he's truly the killer, there's got to be something phony in that photo. About the camera that took this photograph. Oh come now, it's all too clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the timestamp on the photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lordly Taylor, and on top of that, it was Lordly Taylor staff that printed that picture's data. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way that picture could have been altered. Why not? Like, Luke, Luke was in the basement warehouse by himself with the computer that has the data on it. He could have just changed the photo's timestamp. Like, trivially. <laughs> he, he didn't, but it doesn't... he could have done. I, I don't know. I see. It looks like I'd better find something else that could be suspicious. So, this alibi is false? It has to be, or we couldn't have killed Mr. Bullet at KB Security. But I'm not really spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the mask to mask in the photo is a fake, or the photo itself is. Okay, we have, to, we have to object here somewhere, but I don't quite remember where. I actually cannot remember what we're supposed to do. <laughs> I know I know what the the um contradiction is, but I don't know how to prove it. Da 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 da. Let's just throw down a quick save and try a few things because I cannot remember what to do. Uh... Okay, it's not just the photo itself. Let's just try a couple things. I'm holding B to fast forward here just because I can't remember. Um...
Um, hmm. I think maybe I just need to press again now that I've pressed everywhere else. Let me just uh, reload and loop through the presses again. So this photograph is the proof, correct? Indeed it is. And the man in the photo is certainly wearing a mask. Yeah, we've seen this already, I'll just fast forward a little bit. No, that was not it. Um... Okay, here we go. Lordy Taylor provided that camera. There's no way I could have tampered with it. That means I could not have killed Kane Bullard unless I had an accomplice. Hmm. Come on, think long and hard about that night. The basement warehouse and this picture that supposedly captures it. It's got to be here. Isn't there something funny about this picture? You bet there is. Are you implying that this picture is a fake? You bet I am. There's definitely something strange about this picture. I took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. And there's something in this photo that doesn't match my memory of that night. Very well. Then let's see what you have to say. What about this photograph do you find funny? Uh, it's this area here. The funny part is right here. Why this... this is a blood stain. Ah, blood! Now this case is getting interesting. Um, not exactly. This stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. And peach coloured at that. From blood to peaches, the judge sure loves going on his wild tangents. The problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is, when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse, it turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Well, Mr. Wright? What is supposed to be in this picture instead of the paint stains? The statue. The supervisor of the treasure exhibit stated the following. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime, around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. I realised that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I myself was there the night the theft took place, and saw the statue in that spot. If this picture was truly taken on that night, then the statue should have been there. But when I went there the day after the theft, that statue of the old bag was sitting in the corner. Hmm, perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally? Your Honour, this statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It would take more than an accidental push to move at that distance. Ha. Huh. In that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why that statue was moved that night? C can you do it, Nick? Never mind who moved it. The real question is why did they move it? Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you're prepared with your answer. Now then, who was the one that moved the golden statue on the night of the crime? It was, it was Luke at me. Like, obviously. The one who moved the statue is none other than... Loot at me. Come now, sir lawyer. There you go again off on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. That is indeed very simple, however. Why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? The reason for moving the golden statue, here's where our battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move that statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Look at me, you, pret you pretended to be Mask de Masque, to create an alibi by showing you were at Lordly Taylor that night. But this photograph contains a single, fatal flaw. 
If the statue had been there, your lie would have been exposed like cheap film at a drugstore. That is why you had to move the statue. A single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. Just where in this picture does this lie exist? It's the timestamp, I believe. Naturally, the lie in this photo is the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke Atme went to KB security and murdered Kane Bullard. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to be at Lordy Taylor at this time. But what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember if you will, Your Honour. When was this statue placed besides the warehouse door? Beside or besides? Beside the warehouse door. Well, the statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime, and it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke Atme had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim, and so in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. What the? Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. Ah. So, on the day of the crime, Mr. Atme must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that is why Luke Atme had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match with the way it had been in his photo. Wah! Order, order, Mr. Atme, is this true? One moment, Your Honor. H have you forgotten this? W what's that? The data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. It's true that the camera had been set up by the Lordly Taylor staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. Ah. Ah! Order, order! Mr. Gotto, what is the meaning of this? Gotto, I warned you about making me wait. Now put that coffee down. My eleventh cup. I promise to drink no more than seventeen during a trial. Which means I'm still good till the last drop. However, the defense has a very good point. A good point? So what? We are all but travellers on a road of infinite points. Um, I think he's got his points mixed up with his other points. So you say this photograph was taken ahead of time, and that the statue was moved in order to make it match. That's a very interesting idea. However, there's one point that can't be denied. Which is... that it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe can never reach their dreams. Th that's very true. N no way, don't fall for that, Your Honor. Hey, Mr. Damask. Yes? If there's no funny business in your actions as Mask Damaske, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes, please provide this court with your testimony about your plan to steal a sacred urn. Okay, we're starting to unravel his plan here. The sacred urn heist. I first received the request from Lordly Taylor about 20 days ago. The urn was placed in a box and Zvari was then sent to the warehouse. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so I sent my card 10 days beforehand. I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1am on October 12th. That's pretty much all the stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but we will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of new information he gave. Witness, you're sure there are no mistakes this time? Zvari. 
Very well then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay, so the problem here is if you have a look at the calling card that he sent, which is here, it says, take good care of the speckled urn, won't you? He's talking about the little pink spots that are on the urn, and you may remember those pink spots were accidentally introduced by Adrian Andrews after the urn had arrived. And then he shouldn't have been able to see that to know that the urn was spotty until the day he actually stole. So the card, which was sent 10 days before that, should not be able to talk about the urn as being speckled. A contradiction. I th think I present the card to this one, maybe? I'm just going to throw down a save just in case I need to press some more first, but I can already see the contradiction, so... Objection! Mr. Atme, if you really are Mask to Mask, eh? Then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course. Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Mask to Mask eh, had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now, the speckled here surely refers to this pink pattern on the sacred urn. Yes, that is true, but so what? Truth be told, there is no way that Mask to Mask could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? This pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to Lordly Taylor. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day that the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse, the urn was broken due to human error, or should I say, an error-prone human. And that's when the pink paint got in the urn. Ugh, you can't be serious. And yet this calling card clearly mentions the pink the paint pattern. Which means, Detective Atme had seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when this fake photo was taken. Poor. And because this photo is fake, your alibi for the night of the murder no longer holds water. Gwa 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 gwa. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? Grr. Mm mm. All right, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pose. Huh? Ha. Huh. It's so sad. No one has any conviction these days. C conviction you say? Yesterday we all decided unanimously that this man was Mask to Mask, eh? and now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? Th that's a good point. N no way, don't fall for that too, Your Honor. You say that Luke Atme was the one who killed Cain Blood? Then let me ask you this. Why would he do that? <laughs> An excellent point. Motive, Mr. Wright, motive. Might you my merry murderous motive manifest? N Nick, he's getting his second wind. If he prepared an alibi and pinned his crime on Ron Delight as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is Ron Delight. Isn't that right, detective? Indeed. According to my own research, the boy's motive is clear. Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us as to what the defendant's motives were. I'd be honoured to, Sir Old Timer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. Motive for murder. I, Luke Atme, had no points of contact with the victim whatsoever. Kane Bullard decided to investigate Mask to Mask eh, and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the blackmail letter and sent it to Ron Delight. And it was again Mr. Bullard who harboured a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. 
Mr. Ballard's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is Mask de Masco. That is why Mr. Delight saw it fit to kill Kane Ballard. Truly a tragedy. So the victim, Kane Ballard, blackmailed the defendant? This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant found in the def in the defendant's apartment. A handwriting test confirms that Mr. Bullard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. Okay, but handwriting tests are not reliable. But okay, what? Blackmail letter updated in the court record. Very well, Mr. Wright. Begin your cross examination. Okay, so we have a look at that back blackmail letter. We'll notice it says, If you don't, I'll take that red diamond you received the other day instead. Remember wondering what this red diamond is? If you have a look at uh, the list here, talking about the various things that Master Masque has stolen, the Tear of Eminon was a jewel. Maybe, maybe it's the red diamond? But it's not, it's a blue diamond. So, um... If, you've, if you're colorblind, you might have a little bit of trouble with this part of the case, but yeah, it's a blue diamond. It's not a red diamond. So, the red diamond is probably the one that Luke at me is wearing, that we can see on his finger just there. Dun dun dun! <laughs> you mean this blackmail letter right here? It says, bring $50,000, and the handwriting is, without a doubt, the victim's? There's no mistake, we have an official report to prove it. But I don't see an addressee on this, addressee on this letter anywhere. An addressee? This letter was d discovered in Ron Delight's apartment, and Mr. Delight did show up at this designated place and time. The fact that there is no addressee is irrelevant. I wonder. What's up, Nick? I just had a thought. What if that blackmail letter wasn't meant for Mr. Delight? Whoa, do you have any evidence of that? For some reason, I just can't shake the feeling that there's something not quite right about this blackmail letter. Well, everyone, are you quite satisfied? Uh, I think we just object to here and point out that the letter's not sent to Ron Delight? I'm not sure. We might need to keep pressing. I'm just gonna throw a save down again. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Atme? Well, if it's just a few, I guess it's alright. When you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. C contradiction I don't know where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. You're one to talk. At times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? Indeed, time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. Uh, I think what we present is this clipping. Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. It contains a picture of the Tear of Eminon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is this jewel's colour. Colour? I'm not much for discussing colour myself. According to the clipping, the colour of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. R red? Which means... The red diamond described in the blackmail letter is not the tear of Eminon that Master Masque stole at all. And your point is, Mr. Trite? So you were trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else. That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say, right, Nick? Yes. This is who Kane Bullard was actually blackmailing. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> Naturally, it was you, Detective at me. Do you have some sort of basis for that claim? 
You have been personally involved in every single Mask to Mask A case. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen and received a jewel as your reward. Uh, a jewel. Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your finger. That red diamond ring. <laughs> that is the diamond referred to in the letter. Which means that Kane Bullard wrote that letter in order to blackmail you. Ah. Order, order in the court. Um, um, order I say. It seems you've gone too far with your childish pranks, Mr. Trite. Uh oh. I don't like the way he said that. Kane Bullard blackmailing Luke at me? Are you for real? Yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him. Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contains the following passage. If you don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it certainly does. Kane Bullard threatened to make Luke Atme's identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep a secret. So just what was that identity? Atme killed Kane Bullard because he was afraid of his secret becoming known. What was the identity he wanted to keep secret? This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity that Luke Atme wanted to so desperately keep secret was his identity as... a blackmailer. Luke Atme was a blackmailer. Hey now, isn't that a little different from what you've been saying? You said that Kane Bullard was the one blackmailing Luke Atme. Are you saying that Atme was blackmailing someone else on top of that? Ugh, you have to admit, that does sound a little odd. It's not odd. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke Atme. But, Ron Delight was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the Tier of Eminon heist. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from some very kind person, incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans. In which case, that would mean that Ron Delight was actually Mask de Masque. That is what we are claiming. Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than Luke Atme. Shh, silence. <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What is? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Careless, with a tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? <laughs> How did you? <laughs> you say that I, Luke Atme, was blackmailing Ron Delight? In which case, I would naturally know all about his relation to Mask to Masque. Well, yes. Ron Delight started receiving plans from his second crime onward, correct? Which means I learned of his identity, his identity when he committed that first crime. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. In that case, let's see some hot, bitter evidence. During the first crime, how did Luke Atme know that Ron Delight was Mask to Masque? Um, well they were both there. Like, if you look at the picture... I believe he just presents the newspaper clipping again. I think I see it. See what? What? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Gets into lots of mischief trying to be the centre of attention. W what do you mean? This newspaper clipping. It has a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that Mask de Masque didn't just disappear into thin air. He just took off his outfit and hid it in a bucket. That... that sounds far too stupid to be true. Correct. With tricks like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Atme. 
That's when you learned that under his mask, Master Maske was really Ron Delight. What the? Wasn't he supposed to be Master Maske? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. I can't believe it. He's just a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud, trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. Why you, how dare you expose me like that? Why I, I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. I, I'm a famous and proud ace detective and, and also Master Maske. Why can't you understand that? I'm afraid you are neither a proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity. Why you... How dare you even imply that one so smart and capable life ever fails such slowly the depths of of yours, you're real fools, I say. None of you can compare with my genius, you're really just jealous. So go on, desecrate me, commemorate me, this great tech cannot handle blackmail, murder, threats, I'll get away with all of it. <laughs> it's enough to make one laugh. That was really fast. <laughs> it would seem we've finally arrived at the real answer. That was quite a performance for Mr. Atme. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Atme. Objection. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. W what do you mean? I'm already prepared to live my ruling. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears that your claws weren't quite sharp enough, Mr. Trite. W what are you... It's true that you've proven a lot of things. Things like Luke Atme was a filthy blackmailer, and that he wasn't at Baldy Taylor the night of the murder. That's right, that's why he's the one who killed Mr. Bull. But... There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he was at the murder scene. Therefore, if you can't prove that this pitiful excuse for a man was at KB security, then I don't see how a verdict can be delivered. No, no way! Order, order in the court. Well, Mr. Wright, this is it. This is the final round. I've got to prove that Atme was at Mr. Bullard's office on that night. B but can you really prove that? That's long enough. Mr. Trite, I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke Atme was at KB Security, and the defense... I can't prove it. I... I can't prove it. Just as I thought. But, if we hear more of Detective Atme's testimony... Objection. Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Trite. W what do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. What? Have you forgotten? Luke Atme is here after we interrupted his own trial. And you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial and face his guilty verdict as Mask de Masque. no Well now, Sir Lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the Ace Detective as well as Mask de Masque. My verdict will verify that. Just as Rondelites will verify that he is the true murderer, I declare that with that, that with the full force of my Ace Detectiveness. Order, order in the court. That's enough deliberation over this witness. Uh, I can't believe this. At this rate, Ron is... D don't give up now, Nick. We still have tomorrow. We can look for more evidence and... By then, it'll be too late. Huh? Why? Double jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any court of law. Double jeopardy? Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, that defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. This is a fundamental rule of all courts, and it applies to this witness as much as it applies to anyone else. Mr. Atme will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as Mask de Masque, which means he will be innocent as far as the murder of Cain Bullard is concerned, 
This is not how Double Jeopardy works, in case you were wondering. Like, proving that he stole the sacred urn, he hasn't actually been tried for this murder. He's being tried for a different crime and found guilty for that, which is not finding him innocent for this crime. <laughs> but you just gotta go with it. No way. The fact that you are unable to prove Mr. Atme's guilt of that crime here means that he will never again be tried as Cain Bullard's murderer. That is not how this works. It's not, it's not even his trial, he's a witness. For Ron Delight's trial. <laughs> Ugh. <sighs> now there's nothing I can possibly do to win. Even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent, the real killer, Luke Atme, will go free. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today, and as long as there is no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare that there will be no further questioning of this witness. Are there any objections? Then I hereby end the cross-examination of Luke at me. <gasps> I think... I see it. Your Honor, when you were a child, this is what was on your report card every year has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. How did you... Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Th that voice. No way. Long time no see, Phoenix. M Mia! This is the true power of the Q-Rain channeling technique. I know that it's really Maya who's standing before me, but right now she's my mentor, Mia Fey. Now, let's do this. But, but there's nothing more we can do, Mia. Without any more testimony, I can't cross-examine... Not yet. The testimony's not over yet. W what do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. Y yes that's true, but unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. This one, yeah. Well now, Sir Lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the Ace Detective as well as Master Damaske. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ron Delights will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Y yes but those comments appear to have no importance whatso- Very well, then we shall prove their importance via cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we, the defence, assert our right to question them. Is that alright with you, prosecutor? Is something the matter, Mr. Gotto? Ah, nothing. Oh, Sir Lawyer, looks like you're one step too late. If you think such falsehoods will do anything to me, Luke at... Let's hear it. Huh? It's true that the witness made some remarks. So then, let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. Mr. Gotto, what are you... Very well then, Mr. Luke at me. I'm going to allow the defense to cross-examine your earlier remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declared the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us one last bit of testimony. I, uh... Phoenix, this is it. This is our absolute last chance. Y yes, Chief. The last testimony. Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph ready. My brilliant deduction was what informed me that the true culprit was one delight. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was abundantly clear that he was there. I was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer, which only sounded once. The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? The victim would have left prints if he sounded it, which means the killer sounded it. Mr. Delight was wearing his Master Masque outfit, which is why he left no prints. 
and the blackmail letter, the victim likely just mistook the colour of the jewel. Zvari. Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor boy. This testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. The witness's earlier remarks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained, and none of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But, how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look over all the documents. It's elementary, sir lawyer. Are you going to make even more trouble for us now, sir lawyer? I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. We cannot postpone Luke Atme's trial any longer. This is your last chance. Uh, hang on a sec, just one chance? Ha, huh. it seems that the party's about to begin. Well, Phoenix, there isn't any evidence that contradicts with that testimony. So it would seem. W what do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix, pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? At any rate, this is our last chance. If you can't point out a case-breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Cup number 17. The last cup. It seems like the time has come to put an end to this trial. I have to find a fatal contradiction in this testimony, and I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Which means all I can do is find the contradictory remark and press it. Remember, you only get one chance. Very well then, Mr. Wright, please begin your final cross-examination. Yeah, if you press anything that's wrong, you immediately lose the case. Like, so you have to pick the right one and press it. I so happen I know what the right one is, so it's not a problem. Uh, but... This part of the game is very annoying. <laughs> The right one is this one, because as you might remember, we only discovered earlier in this trial that Mr. Delight was wearing that outfit. There is no possible way that Luke at me would know that, unless... Mr. at me, about this last remark... You still don't get it, do you, Trite? This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Gotto. What? Mr. Atme, it seems you have finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. How can you say that? Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Atme? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? Mr. Delight was wearing his Mask de Masque outfit, is that correct? Indeed, that's what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove that you're a fool. <laughs> I... I'm sorry, whatever do you mean? For some reason, I'm starting to get really thirsty. When exactly did we learn the fact that Ron Delight was dressed as Master Masque when he went to the scene of the crime? Th that was some... Um, it was just a few hours ago back when my sixth cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. That's right, the defendant had yet to tell anyone else this fact before this morning. Therefore, the only people who should know this are those who have been watching this trial. Do you understand now, Detective Atme? There is no way that you should have known about that. Ah, I. You were in the next courtroom being tried as Mask de Masque. So then, in lightness, just how did you know about that piece of information? Urk. Well. Come on, this detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, Mr. Delight was wearing his Mask to Mask outfit. There is one and only one way for Detective Atme to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say. Please recall, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. 
When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. For a second, my client witnessed the real killer. But Mr. Delight never saw his attacker. So there's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke at me. It's with that statement that I'll turn this case on its head. Just, just what are you implying? Mr. Delight saw the real killer, correct? Now if you turn that statement around, it stands to reason that the real killer had also seen Ron Delight. I impossible. <gasps> Detective Atme, you saw Mask de Masque at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed Kane Bullard and assaulted Ron Delight. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am. The tragic clown. That's the same line you gave yesterday. But I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. <laughs> what an awfully complicated incident. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke at me, who was in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmailer, Luke Abney tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Mask de Masque in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with this plan. To use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um... At any rate, it would seem we've finally found the truth. Excuse me. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me! Oh, I didn't realise you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict. I know, you never committed any murder. That's right, I'm so glad you understand that, but... I am... Um, I really am Mask de Masque! Huh? So, thanks to that trial yesterday, I'm innocent now, right? Uh... What was it you said? Double Jeopardy? Now that you mention it, I've been careless. Careless? Um, what do you think, Mia? As the defendant says, the rule of double jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime which he was once found innocent. See, the problem with this part is that being, like, a, a famous master thief is not a crime. Stealing things is a crime, and he's innocent of stealing the sacred urn, but he is not innocent of stealing the other things that Mask de Masque stole. In fact, he is confirmed guilty of stealing those things. So you'd think he would have to go to prison for the theft, but he doesn't. He, he's just innocent now. <laughs> a defendant can never be tried twice for a crime which he was once found innocent. Then, Mask de Masque is really innocent? It would seem so. For now. F for now? Now then, this court finds the defendant. Not. Guilty. Yay! Oh, this is really lucky. Wait, uh, I... This isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is, I still am must must after all. October 14th, 3.35pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 4. You did it, Phoenix! Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because Maya doesn't call on me much these days. Oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya, she seems kind of torn these days. You mean, about becoming the master of the Curain Channeling School? Becoming the master means saying goodbye to our mother. Misty Fay, right? Watch over her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. Mia. 
Ah, uh, Mr. Wright. Um, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Delight. S thank you so much. Uh, no, wait. Nothing really matters anymore, though, now that all of this has happened. Come on, just be happy already. Maya. You've been cleared of the murder charges and got off as Master Mask to boot. But, in exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? Stealing security information from KB Security, becoming Master Maske? I did it all for one reason. For her. You mean your wife, Desiree? She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I knew that, I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KB Security and lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have had any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Master Maske? Yes, but it's all over now. A broken bowl can never be put back together. Th that's not true, right Nick? Prank. Really? Can we go back to the way things were? You'll be fine and Nick can prove it. I can? I kinda wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if a bowl is broken, there is always a way to put it back together. The Sacred Urn. The Sacred Urn? Desi was the one who found this. Desiree, your wife, she's always believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about anything. Ah, there you are. M Mr. Light. You did it, Ronnie. You're innocent. I'm so happy. Th th thank you. I, I appreciate that. But, um... I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie, why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you'd quit KB Security. I never imagined that you were really Mask to Mask A either. Mr. Light, what are you going to do now that you know? Y you're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So fast that there's no way he could ever get away. Um, but didn't you say that you hated criminals? Hmm? Oh, I only hate people who act all cowardly and sneaky. Like that detective. Oh, I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them, like a man. <laughs> I just love a man who's so chivalrous. Chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with the thrills and excitement. D Desi. Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Oh, She loves criminals after all. <laughs> Nikki boy, y yes? I'm really glad I asked you to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um... Take care of yourself. You too, Nikki boy. Ooh, I can feel my face going red. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya, congratulations! <gasps> Talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick, how could you? With another man's wife in front of Mystic Maya. No, 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 you got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Never, ever! Oh my goodness. So just as the case came to a close, so too did my consciousness. Ron said, a broken bowl could never be put back together. But I know that's not true. I mean, just look. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. Oh, So adorable. Episode 2, The Stolen Turnabout, The End. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, a brand new episode has been added. Episode 3, Recipe for Turnabout. I hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, because that's what we're doing next. Um, that's it for this video. Bye! <laughs>